adrenaline from the brown bear hunt had just barely worn off. When about a month later, I get a phone call in a hotel room. I was actually at a fishing tournament, and the fellow on the phone says, I'm Adam Bronson from the Hunt Fool magazine. He says, uh, you've drawn a Wheeler Peak cheat tag, a big one tag. It's like a one in a thousand call. I'm like, yeah, right. Who is this really? I think it's one of my buddies. And they were messing with me. And he's like, hey, buddy, we take this really serious. You're a ton of fool. You draw the sheep tag. It's one of the best in Hollywood. Okay. When he said that, I knew it was for real. And I asked him a few questions about how it was. And five minutes later, I'm on the phone with one of the best in Hollywood. Be we were real excited this year when Joe Thomas contacted us and informed us he wanted us to help him along on his archery hunt and film it for his TV show. It was a challenge we thought we were sure up for and we're excited to help him out. All summer long I was getting emails with pictures of these big rams from the Peak. Gene and his guys were going up there every other week and really figured the sheep out. I mean, they know the place better than anybody. And they would send me back pictures of these beautiful rams and they'd have a big I mean, the excitement level just built and built and built as the summer progressed. I knew September 1st just couldn't come fast enough. I actually arrived into Red River, New Mexico, about two and a half days before the opening day of sheep season, just to help get myself acclimatized to get ready for the altitude. Now, Wheeler Peak is 14,000 feet. I mean, it's one of the highest places you can hunt in the United States of America. And I come from 800 feet in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I knew I needed a little bit of time to get ready. But Red River just sits at about 75, 108,000 feet. So a couple of days there would really help. And it was kind of cool to get to see that town. It's a ski resort, there's a lot to do there. And just walking around kind of helped my body get ready for that one. The day before my hunt, GT paired me up with one of his top guys, Blake Trackman from Montana. Now, Blake had been there the whole week before. He found a beautiful band of rams up in the edge of the timber. And since I was going to be bow hunting, he felt like that, that those would be the rams we needed to go for. And the game plan was to go to the day before the season and set up and watch those rams all day to try to pattern what they would do hour to hour. And that's exactly what we did. Just getting to the vantage point where we're going to glass those sheep. Was a, was a job. I mean, it was several miles of a, a well established trail, but fairly steep. And remember, we're going from about seven to 10,000 feet in a slow climb, and I was feeling that altitude. I mean, every step was work. Blake and I have been sitting on this little outcrop in a rock watching this basin since daylight this morning. It's about one o'clock, and still no rams. And uh, I'm running out of sandwiches, man. But the thing is, is, is Blake. And, and GT's crew have been up here for two days in a row and they've been watching three what they call magnificent rams and 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 he believes they're bedded in the timber and they just haven't come out to feed yet so we're just glassing and glassing and glassing and uh, I'll admit for me it's it's really difficult to continue to do that when I'm seeing nothing but but Blake he's just all over the place he's in the spot and scope he's in the, he's got the binoculars going he's changing angles he's running one side of the valley to another and, you know, I hope he's right, because tomorrow is opening day. Blake knew about where these rams were located from, from earlier days of scouting, but it took us about three or four hours before we finally found the ram we were It was absolutely amazing to sit there and watch that ram, knowing that that was the ram that I was going to go after, to watch the spotting scope at about two miles away. I mean, it was just so relaxed sitting there. Well, here it is. It's a uh, two thirty. Our three rams just come off that we've been waiting here for three days for, and uh, it's looking good. They're in a really gettable spot, and uh, hopefully in the morning we can get up there and get within bow range. It's a little bit more difficult to do, but we got good cover all the way up. We got a road to stand of timber going up here, so hopefully in the morning, sometime we can get Joe up there and get within shooting distance to this and see if we can't get that big ram to hit the dirt. The next day, we 
next morning, GT paired us up with another guy that was going to take it. Now, Rick also knows he could have beat really well, and we felt like he'd be a big asset in class and it helped him to find those sheep. Plus, Rick's a bit bold and knows what it takes to get in close to those sheep, and him. GT felt like he was the guy that needed to go along on this trip. We got to our bad point. We wanted to start classing for those sheep. We quieted in daylight, and it was actually pretty cold. And we all set up and started looking for those rams. It didn't take very long for Rick to spot them just above the timber line of the feet of Eddie. As soon as we spotted those rams, we, we grabbed our gear and we started to cross the valley on the other side. It was steep. I mean, the terrain is very steep. And if it wasn't all the high altitude, I had to do it then. It was climbing the rocks and it was steep. Thank you. 